The following is a Candlepin Stars and Strikes rebroadcast featuring some of our most memorable programs. everybody and welcome once again to Park Place Lanes here in Wyndham, New Hampshire. Doug Brown along with Dan Murphy. We're real happy to have you with us. It's series championship time once again and we've got the top two seeds battling. Uh, both of these guys have been in Tournament of Champions action before and trying to get back for our fourth annual tournament coming up next spring. That's right and uh, Paul Berger's been in every single one of them so far so it's uh, going to be interesting to match up. Both bowlers been here before. Both bowlers are ranked one and two in this ladder. It should be on paper. It should be a great one. And both bowlers had terrific roll-off scores we might add uh, to get to this point and they made those roll-off scores uh, pay off by being in this championship match. Let's meet them. First of all our number two seed. He's from Londonderry, New Hampshire. He got a win last week over Glenn LeBlanc. Tim Lipke. Tim averages 129, 200 for a high single, 515 for an individual high three. His roll-off score is 730. Which ordinarily is probably enough to win, but not this time, because in this particular ladder series, the overall championship roll-off score and the holder of that number one seed spot is a guy who, as Dan said, has been in every Tournament of Champions event so far, Paul Berger from Hopedale, Mass. He carries an average of 128, 191 for a high single, 493 for a high triple. Forget about those. The roll-off score, five strings, 772. That's an average of 154 plus for five strings. Of course, we've got a lot of money at stake here today, 500 for the runner-up, $1,000 for the winner, and more importantly, the winner will also advance into the 1992 Tri-State Megabucks Tournament of Champions. We have $50 in the bonus ball contest later on. We're going to get to all of this with the first string between Tim Lipke and Paul Berger right after this timeout. Don't go away. Well, the early part of this series was dominated by our number four seed, Glenn LeBlanc. He won the first two matches, beating Paul Willits and Don Paquin with big scores. But last week, he was in turn defeated by our number two seed, Tim Lipke. And so the top two seeds hold up for this particular series championship. It'll be number one, Paul Berger, against number two, Tim Lipke. And Mr. Lipke will get us started on lane 32. Yeah. <laughs> Roll day. 379 last week in beating Glenn LeBlanc and Tim uh, as you might have heard at the end of last week's show was not real happy with the 379 but he did get the win. And he's right in the pocket with his first ball today. I got to tell this quick yeah, story. Yeah, I was going to say you should tell that funny story that one, one of his rooters. One of his friends walked up to him after the show last week <laughs> went up and <laughs> offered a handshake and Congratulations and said, hey, Tim, congratulations. That was awful. <laughs> <laughs> Tim had a lot of uh, missed chances last week, and he knows that he can't afford to miss many today if he's going to beat Paul Berger. Both of these guys have winning records on Stars and Strikes. Tim Lipke is now 7-4 and four after his win last week. Paul Berger is 6-2 and two overall. And of course, for Paul Berger, many of those matches have come in the Tournament of Champions. Oh, Tim Lipke chopping through here. Nine bucks. And a 19. But two open frames. And when both of these bowlers throw open frames, it's you know, unusual a lot of time to throw two in a row. Now that I've totally jinxed both bowlers. <laughs> Paul Berger now. Oh, boy. Big first ball leaves the 10 pin. And spare it up in the first. Last time Paul was here was back in the spring in the Tournament of Champions with a very close loss to Pat Pay, who eventually won the Tournament of Champions last spring. Uh, Paul qualified as the number three seed and lost by four pins, and he drops nine more, this time on the spare. 
uh, in the 1990 Tournament of Champions, Paul was the number one seed and won it, beating Al Cloutier. And he gets two marks in a row to start this match. And then in 89, our first Tournament of Champions, Paul was the number six seed and rolled a 399 in the first match and lost to Mike Morgan. And he certainly threw those two spares with authority. Both solid nine pin drops. And there's one for Tim Lipke. Spare it up. His first mark of the match. And let's see, coming toward you, and it'll be a seven drop. And now this is perhaps a makeable spare. You'd like the angle of the wood a little farther towards the 10 pin, but because it's going to throw the head pin right to the side. Well, it's going too far left anyway, so. Well, that time he threw the head pin all the way over into lane 30. <laughs> be an eight. Well, Paul Berger, two open. Two marks in a row for Paul and he's working on a spare as he comes up in the third. Back in the pocket, this time the triangle, five, eight, nine, seven drop on the spare, gives him 36 after two. No. Well, before we go too much farther, we ought to just take a moment here and wish everyone a very safe and healthy Christmas holiday on Wednesday. Hope you have a chance to spend all or part of it with the people who are important to you and uh, have a very safe holiday season. Of course, next Sunday we'll be back here on Candlepin Stars and Strikes and with Stars and Strikes doubles with brand new series in both shows. In fact, next week here on Stars and Strikes at noon, we will begin our annual mixed doubles event. Always a lot of fun. But uh, we want you to have a great holiday this week. That's for sure. Go bowling. You open on Christmas Day? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. We open a little later, but we do open on Christmas. Nice big meal, and they get those new bowling balls and shoes for Christmas. They want to try them out. Mm. Hilo Jack for Tim Lipke. <laughs> Second time he's at it. This time he has even more wood. Much, but much like the last shot, you have to clip that head pin to give yourself a chance of making it. This time looks a little better, and he yes. does. Well, the ball snuck down into the corner and just took out the seven pin. Just. <laughs> Would really slow the ball down. Well, he has a spare, and right back in the pocket, and a six drop. The four, seven on the left, five, and ten, and piece of wood in front of the five and four. Looked like it should have been a lot better. See if he decides to go play that wood in the channel, yeah. There it is, and watch, watch out. out. Oh, that ball is coming. <laughs> And a 10, 70 through 6. Tim? So with all the holiday festivities and everything, we I think we forgot to mention that this is championship week, too. So not only the bowl is, is big money, the turn into a champion's qualification, but also the three-string total is determining uh, their seeding in that tournament of champions. So right now, I believe it's 418 for Dave Richards. And second place right now, Stu Bergman with 380. So I think both of those scores could be in jeopardy today. Spare it up in the fifth for Paul Berger, matching the spare put up by Tim Lipke. 
Is how important is that? I think it's very important. Not only is it one step up and bigger money, but it's the mental stress that you go through in the Tournament of the Champions. It's tough on the regular show, but bigger crowd, bigger money, and all tournament, former tournament, um, I should say ladder champions. Five pin left for Paul. Big nine drop on the spare. He's had several nine drops already. And there's another spare. Lead is 12. Boxes, well, almost boxes completed. Paul still has the fill on that spare. Tim Lipke just catches the head pin, and that will be a nine drop. Looking at the eight pin and a lot of wood. And it's getting closer. He's got a lot to play with on the right. Even more so than that angle. Split screen shows you. No trouble covering. Could have been a punch out, but turns out to be a spare lead with the eight drop. Three six, piece of wood in between. Catches the three pin, should be no problem. Oh, he's far to the right. You see the intensity in both these bowlers. They know you can't make too many mistakes and survive this match. 98 through eight for Tim Lipke. Paul Berger coming up working on a spare. Paul lives in Hopedale, Mass with his wife Paula and their two sons Damon and Alex who are both here and uh, wearing Ooh. rally caps for their father and uh, <laughs> it seems to be working. <laughs> Strike on spare. That's three marks in a row for Paul Berger. They're wearing rally caps and chopping and doing everything they possibly <laughs> can here. Paul Berger working on a strike now. Full on the head pin this time. Three, six, ten on the right, two, four left. Trying to match this spare eight put up by Tim. It's gonna be a strike seven. And an eight box. The lead is 19. Final two, first game for Tim Lipke. And he's right through the center. How about that for a leaf? Punched out the one, two, three, eight, and nine. See if he can make something happen here. Not quite. Well, well oh, hold on here. Hold on. I don't think it's gonna knock everything over, but it may get rid of the five, yep. And it's a 10 box. And you see it, one, 108 through nine. Looking for a break. Two, four, 10. Certainly has a chance if he goes after the two and the four and he can cover those two because the piece of wooden, both pieces are going to move for him. Yes, fine shot. Fourth mark in this first game for Tim Lipke, all spares. You see the wood moved effectively for the 10. So it's 118 and a ball to come. And it's 124, the opening game for Tim Lipke. So it looks uh, Paul Berger doesn't look. It will be Paul Berger with the lead. But how many? 
Well, we'll see. Oh, oh, big strike, kicking out the six pin. But he was nice and tight in the one-two pocket that time. And he gives himself an equal shot at both the one-two and the one-three pocket. Ball goes relatively straight. And then this time the one-three, and it's a double. Wow. Well, <laughs> perfect example of what you were talking about. He barely gave you a chance to say it. One on each side. Basically, he might be a little left of center when he starts, but he's basically down the middle of the lane, and it's a straight ball. He gives yourself an equal shot at both, both pockets. And of course, that's the other option, <laughs> going right through the middle. All of a sudden, a 19-pin lead is going to balloon up a, you know, be a 161 for Paul Berger as he crowds a lot into that last, those last two boxes. 44 pins in the final two because of the double strike. And Paul Berger will carry the lead in a game two against Tim Lipke when we return. Paul Berger is all set to start off the middle string and he has the lead in this championship match. The winner to move on to the Tri-State Megabucks Tournament of Champions. And of course, Paul Berger is trying to make it four consecutive appearances on the tournament. He's the only guy that's been in every one so far, and he is uh, certainly at least threatening to do it again, although it's a long way from over at this point. Still two games to go. And with the way both of these guys can score, leads can disappear in a hurry. Right now, Paul Berger is definitely the better bowler right to, at this point in time. He doesn't, hasn't missed a legitimate spare leave yet, and he's on his object pin most of the time. So Timmy's got to bring his game up a notch or two and uh, hope that Paul cools off a little. Three, six, and seven left. Of course, I'm, we did mention the, the three-string total. Paul Berger is a great shot at, at least a start on a, on a fantastic high triple. Well, uh, the last game Paul Berger rolled in that roll-off in which he had a 772, he ran 10 consecutive spares in the final game for a 178. And uh, somebody who was there a couple weeks ago uh, when that roll-off was held uh, told me there were no cheapies. <laughs> well, you think 178, that's uh, almost 18 pins per box, so that means they're all you know, seven, eight, and nine fills, I'm sure. The one, the two, and the four left for Tim. He's got some work to do. Yes. That's the way to start it. His fifth mark. All spares. Once again, a uh, word of thanks and appreciation as Tim Lipke drops nine on the spare with a look at the 10 pin. Word of thanks to our participating sponsor for this series championship on Stars and Strikes, Rockingham Toyota Dodge Nissan, where you can come to Salem and save. Rockingham Toyota Dodge Nissan in Salem, New Hampshire. And Tim Lipke makes it two marks in a row. And reduces the lead back to 35 pins. Came in trailing by 37. Paul back on the head pin again. That wood turning now and turning in Paul's favor. Didn't freeze against the six pin, but it didn't matter. It was angled favorably and he converts it for the spare. And that is Paul's ninth mark of the day. Looking for another big fill, and he's got one. Eight this time. He's just all over the head pin. And it looks like he may just drive these two pieces of wood straight back, right in the middle, like that. Oh, and it went right around the nine pin. Looked like a sure bet. And it's a nine box. Well, Tim Lipke came up with two spares the first time. We'll see if he can build on that. We'll get another look at that spare attempt. Wow. <laughs> that close. 
As you said, Timmy's working on two. Threw a big nine drop last time, and this time getting nice mixing as well. Eight more. And a very makeable spare. Two in the seven pieces of wood, both to the left, uh, right of the two pin, which shouldn't come into play, but there's another one in front of the seven. Yes, right on it. All of a sudden, Tim Lipke is uh, getting a little warm. Pocket again, and this time not carrying the extra pin. Seven and a half, seven and three quarters, <laughs> but worse yet, it's the five, the nine, and the seven pins left. Um, he's gonna go after the five and nine. If he hits on the right, he could cut the five into the seven. Like that. Ooh. Mm. <laughs> that close. <laughs> Tim thought he had a shot at it. Well, we will take a timeout here as we approach the halfway point. Tim Lipke has shaved nine pins off that lead. It is now 28 for Paul Berger, and we'll return in a minute. Paul Berger. Box number five, game two. And strike in the fifth. He's not only hitting the pocket, but he is just burying the ball. Look at this. That time it's full. No, we've seen both sides of it. Uh, he talked about Paul throwing and approaching straight. And that, of course, is the danger. This way, and he could have this one. Oh, <laughs> that close. Ooh, <laughs> that's still moving. That's a pretty good fill on the strike after starting with the spread eagle. And it's every other box, so lane 32 has been pretty good to him this game. Spare in the first, the third, and a strike in the fifth. And in the first game, he was four out of five with marks on lane 32, so he's uh, seven out of eight in the match so far. And Tim Lipke finally throws his first strike. You kind of had a feeling it was going to come eventually, the way he was warming it up here in the second game. Matches the strike put up by Paul, trips the six pin. It's both of these bullets. Anytime you put one, there's a chance for a few more. And there's another one. Double strike for Tim Lipke. So all of a sudden, Timmy right back, carbon copy, just tripping the sit six pin both times. Paul Berger. 3 6 10 with the seven. Piece of wood in there. Nice little angle there. If he shoots at the red line, could jump the three pin over. Well, Tim wasn't up there very long, was he? No. <laughs> bang, bang. Sit down. Paul has not had more than two boxes open in a row in this match, and he's got two open right now. Sixth and seventh. Well, let's see if he can... One, three, seven, eight. To show us all a spare shot here, although the wood is uh, becoming favorable. It should keep the one and the three on the plate a little longer yes. for him. Yes, it does. Oh. Hey, we've got a terrific match cooking right now, folks. We, we certainly do. Wow. And this, of course, the double strike is nice, but I'm sure Timmy realized that this is the important ball. If he were to punch two out, it kind of negates the whole thing, but drop seven or eight, another mark, and now you're really talking. Look out, look out, look out! Nine drop. That certainly didn't hurt him. <laughs> <laughs> now the single. Yes. Oh. He couldn't have been more on that pin for the spare. And all of a sudden, the lead is reduced to six pins. And he keeps his pace up. He'll have a great two-string total on the way to the victory, too. Boy, Tim ran all the way back to the, <laughs> the beginning of the approach on that ball. He thought say, he had another one. I should say possible victory, but 
both bowls. What I'm getting at is that three-string total. Both bowls are going to be in excellent position to put a good score up there, whoever wins the match. Four, seven, eight left for Tim. The triangle. No, nope, too far left. Hold it. So he'll retake the lead at least temporarily. Well, not, not necessarily. He'll have to knock both of these down. And he does. So it's a one pin advantage, I believe, for Tim. Yeah, you're right. But Paul Berger's working on a spare, so he can regain the lead. But more important, uh, the 37 pin lead is gone. Oh, big fill. Nine drop on the spare. And it's uh, looking pretty good. Spare it up in the ninth. And the lead swings back the other way by eight. Just, that one's off target, let's see. Five fill. Paul's going to be up in the 290s. And he, may not, and he may not be leading. <laughs> Nine. 295 for two. And we'll see what Tim Lipke can do. <clears throat> he can take the lead in the match with a couple of marks. A little full that time and He'll look at the six, seven. Yeah. Clips, catches the six, the wood with the angle of the wood, he will have a real shot at making the seven. Right now he's concentrating on getting the six. Yes! Wow. Now, he saw something I didn't see, because I, it looked like he was playing this wood right along, and I, I didn't see it, but that's why I'm sitting back here. He's bowling. He's closer. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Boy, that could have been a disastrous fill. He wants fill. that one up. Oh, boy, that could have been a disastrous fill, though, and it turned out to be an eight. He almost wanted that one to stay up, and now he's going to direct some traffic. If he makes this for a mark, he could take the lead in the match. One sixty-seven plus a ball. And the fill is a, wait a minute. It's six now, but it's gonna get better. I have a feeling, seven. One seventy-four. I don't think you're gonna to wanna to be making any plans for the next few minutes. <laughs> this is gonna be a great finish. Tim Lipke leads by three with one game to go to decide it here on Stars and Strikes. Tim Lipke is ready to go first. He is the number two seed, so he bowls first. And he leads by three, but that's not the story. The story is that he came back from 37 pins down after the first game. And he was able to do that while his opponent was throwing 134, which is a pretty decent game in itself. Very likely that we're going to have matching 400 triples in this series championship match. There's a spare to start it. Tim only had two open frames down in that middle game, and he's uh, keeping it going here. Well, you want to protect the three pin advantage and put some marks up, especially for the likes of Paul Berger. He's, he knows he's going to come back at him. It's an eight pin drop, which is good. The bad news is it's the five and the ten that are left. i to try to cut the five on the left hand side. He's close. Mm. All right. 
And it's a nine. So it's 27 after two. Paul Berger up for his first two frames of this third and final string championship week. I'd say both of the scores now posted for the Tournament of Champions are definitely in jeopardy. <laughs> <laughs> what makes you say that? Four horsemen left for Paul Berger. Yes. He's got that. So he matches Tim Spare in the first. There's some tough competitors out there. I have to rank Paul Berger up there with one of the toughest because he, he never seems to let up. I don't care if he's three pins behind or 33 pins behind. And I've noticed a lot of the better bowlers, which we won't name, some of them seem to just let down when they get down by too many. Whoa, and he comes back. Oh, oh. Well, played the wood, try to give yourself a chance of making the mark. The ball comes back this time and put a ring around that one. Well, two balls now in the pocket. Last two boxes for Timmy. He had the 5-10 to show, and this time the 4-5-7-10 to show for it. Not an impossible shot, but certainly one you want to, wouldn't want to make a living to hit trying to make. Mm. Sometimes you wonder just how much it takes out of a bowler coming back from 37 pins. And the other factor is it comes in here is that your your adrenaline is flowing so much that you have to stay within or within yourself. You start overthrowing. I'm not saying that Timmy's doing that right now, but a lot of times that'll happen. Ironically, Paul and I were talking before last week's show about that very thing of overthrowing when the lights go on. But both of these bowlers have been there before, so. And again, let me put the ball in the pocket where we had to do it, but didn't convert. The 810 left, so it'll be two open frames for Paul Berger to work on and possibly reclaim the lead. Well, obviously he probably will if he keeps the ball in the lane. It's a two pin advantage right now for Tim Lipke, but Paul's working on a spare. First, I didn't think he was going to take the lead. <laughs> Looked like half Worcester, but he ended up with six. The one, the two, the eight, and the ten. Piece of wood in front of the one and the two. And nope. not that time. The eight pin stands. Can gain a couple more in count, though. It's opposite two eight frames by Tim Lipke. Interesting. He straight, stayed away from the one that was blocking his way to the eight pin. Played the one way in the right for the 10 to gain two and count and to take over the lead by six pence. And through the center again. Now I think the wood's preventing him from getting the two pin. Let's see though. That's what he's trying to, well, took the two but dead in the wood. Didn't do much damage after that. And it's a nine, and then he gains another one in count. And we will take we'll a break. Take a break right here. With Paul Berger having regained the lead by seven in the match, but six frames to go, and we'll have them right after we have these messages. Well, here we go. Down the stretch. Tim Lippy will be first. Dropped that one prematurely, left it off to the right, but a makeable spare, one, two, seven, eight. In fact, it's a better lead he's had the last couple times he's hit the head pin, so. See if he can convert this. Outside, no. And he'll be open for his fourth consecutive box in the third game. It'll be a nine. 
Tim's going to wait because the uh, ball that he just rolled will be removed. And he's ready now on lean 31. And he's right in the pocket with a big strike. And that's he is a, ready. That's a big mark right there for Tim Lipke because he had a little dry spell. When you got a dry spell, you want a strike too. Kind of takes a little bit of pressure off you having to hit a single or anything else. And Paul comes right back, everything but the 10. And difficult shot because he's going to have to maneuver. Well, let's see where the wood settles down. Yeah, he's going to go right after the 10 pin. Got it. Would roll back far enough so it wasn't a roadblock. He gains another in count. The lead is now eight. And he'll increase it, but he'll be opposite the strike. Off target. And oh. the four pin slides way off the spot, making this even more difficult. <laughs> Tough break for Paul on that one. Nine bucks. Well, this is gonna be real close coming down the last four. Let's take a look at uh, that first ball for Paul Berger. Just wasn't, it just spun the four pin instead of knocking it down. Tim Lipke working on a strike in the sixth. He's a little heavy and he's got a split. Gonna try to go after the two, the four and the six. Eight is the fill on the strike. Paul Berger's lead is five. So by leading by five, Timmy knows he has to at least put one mark up to force a mark by Paul Berger. Of course, he'd like to put a few up there. But I dare say that Paul will not leave five pins standing. Oh my. The one and the nine. It seems certain at this point that regardless of what happens, we're going to have two 400 series in this championship match. And if you're wondering, that has happened before. It has happened on six previous occasions. How about that? Great Almost try. the spare for Tim Lipke. Excellent try. It's happened on six previous occasions, but it hasn't happened for three years. The last time uh, we had matching 400 triples in a series championship match was ironically on Christmas Day 1988 so almost three years ago to the day when the Pat Pay beat Mike Morgan 412 to 402. Well, Paul Berger leading by five but more important to him he's opposite two open frames and can push that lead into double figures which would mean a double mark by Tim Lipke. Oh, oh big boy. strike. Big strike in the seventh. So that's definitely going to force Tim Lipke into a double mark situation. Now the thing comes, will he push him into a double strike situation? Or worse. Oh, wow. <laughs> Everything but the 10. This could be the game right here. Well, it he's appears, right on it. Yeah, it appears almost certain at this point that Paul Berger is going to pass right by Dave Richards 418. And he's in uh, pretty good shape right now. Well, Timmy's thinking strikes. He has to think strikes now. 16 pins down plus the fill by Paul. Of course, with no marks at all, it's over. But even with, well, it's mm. a good try. The roof would have to cave in right about now. <laughs> Paul Berger is going to be in the Tournament of Champions for the fourth consecutive year. And now it's a matter of how high the total is going to be. Right now we're sitting on 418 and 48, uh, 380. Well, Paul already has 403. Plus he's working on a mark in the eighth, so 418 seems to be easily beatable at this point. Tim Lipke will go open in the tenth. Pretty nice position, though. When the, the berth into the Tournament of Champions and can be no worse than third. 
third seed. A 404 triple for Tim Lipke. That was it just a few weeks ago? We had a 390 against Dan Broder. Right. He's had some big scores and hasn't been able to put the W up there. Paul Berger working on a spare. And he's right in the pocket oh again. My. He can really put that score up there now. You see the replay tripping the five pin. And he's thinking, let me throw a double right here. Well, he's already the number one seed as of the moment. He has just knocked out Dave Richards from the top spot. As Paul continues to add to his winning total. There's what he's faced with. Nope. That gives him 135 and, well, 142 and another ball, and it's going to be 142. And it's going to be a 437 three string total for Paul Berger. So that will set a new standard for someone to try and shoot at the rest of the season. 437. The winning score for Paul Berger knocking out Tim Lipke in the series championship match. We'll present the checks and uh, talk to the bowlers and have the bonus ball contest in a minute. Oh, welcome back, and what a terrific championship match we had with uh, matching 400 triples. Uh, Paul Berger has put up a score that'll be tough to beat, 437 for the rest of the way, and at least right now, he's the number one seed in the Tournament of Champions. Just excellent bowling by both bowlers, just like two prize fighters, and uh, neither one are going to give an inch, and uh, just the one who blinked last, I guess. All right, well, we're going to uh, talk to both bowlers, and we've got our bonus ball contest, too, so don't worry. But first of all, we want to have Tim Lipke come on up. How about a big round of applause uh, for this gentleman? We've got... Uh, a check for $500, which is not the check you wanted, but uh, boy, it's, uh, it's a heck of a match. At least uh, to bowl well, I suppose, is some consolation with a 404. It's a consolation, but you're not going <laughs> to win with 106 <laughs> last strings either. And when Paul had me in the uh, first string, he bowled super in the first game. I was lucky enough to really put heat on him in the second game yeah. and came back. And like I say, you're not going to win with 106. So all the luck in the world to Paul, he bowled super. <laughs> Well, it uh, doesn't happen very often that we have two guys roll 400 in the series championship match, but uh, terrific scores uh, for each of you, really. No, he deserves it. He's very yeah. consistent, and what, can, what more can you say? The score proves it. <laughs> well, Tim, uh, hopefully you'll get another chance before the season is over. Uh, always a pleasure, and uh, good luck. I'll be back. Thanks. All right. All right, All right Arnold. Thanks very much. <laughs> Tim Lipke with a 404. Not quite enough today. Let's have Paul Berger come up and uh, see if he can get us a winner in our bonus ball contest. We're going to uh, try and get a $50 winner here. As, uh, we've gone a few weeks without one. Oh, I thought it might be another strike. Let's see. A seven. Let's see. Is it a winner? It is not for Catherine O'Meara from Saugus, Mass. So, Catherine, thanks very much for your card and uh, keep watching. And we will send you a gift from the NHCBA and from the wins. And uh, we've got a big gift for this man right here. We have a check for $1,000 for that outstanding 437. Congratulations. And uh, obviously, you, you felt pretty comfortable today, I would imagine. I sure did. But you can't feel too comfortable with the likes of a Tim Lipke. You can you see the way he comes back. Uh, man's a champion. And it's nice to, to, to beat him. After he gets a game in the 170s, that middle game there, and your lead is gone, uh, what are you thinking about going into game three? It's an even match. Mm -hmm. You've got to beat him, that's all. And again, uh, another big performance for you, and uh, you're making a habit of this, uh, getting into the Tournament of Champions. You must like it. I really do, yes. <laughs> <laughs> now, a lot of fun. Now you'll have to uh, just sit back and uh, keep an eye on some of the scores that are uh, coming up in the next three uh, championship series and see if that 437 holds up. I would say it's a pretty safe bet that you'll be in the top two or three anyway. Well, that's fine, and I'm looking forward to it as usual. It's, yeah. uh, it's a lot of fun being on this show, uh, and I uh, really enjoy it. All right, Paul, it's good to have you again. Congratulations, and we'll see you in the spring on the uh, Tri-State Megabucks Tournament of Champions. What a great score, 437. And uh, that ensures that Paul, for the fourth year in a row, will be in the Tournament of Champions. He's the only guy that's been in every one, and uh, he keeps his string alive. And now, as I say, uh, he can do no worse than fourth after that uh, score today, and that's only if three other guys go by him, and I don't think there's much chance of that happening. That's right, and he's uh, the only one who has a chance to win two of them right now. Right, that's right. That's right. <laughs> uh, I look forward to it. He's a, he's a great bowler, and uh, I'm sure Timmy will be back, and uh, who knows who the next slider is going to bring. Uh, once again, uh, we want to wish everyone a very happy holiday. Merry Christmas to you, Dan, and your family, and uh, we want to hope uh, everybody has a very safe and healthy holiday season out there, and 
Join us again next Sunday here on uh, Candlepin Stars and Strikes. And don't forget to stay tuned. Coming up in a few minutes, we'll have Stars and Strikes doubles. And until then, for Dan Murphy and the whole crew, bye-bye, everybody.